Welcome everyone, this is Moxum. Uh, today I'd like to do a video for everyone on the Synthesis Technology E370. Uh, it's a quad morphing VCO. So I chose this um, because I was looking for a four oscillator uh, module to be driven by the chord section of the Symphonian. So, um, you know, in my search for modules that I felt were very modern, I liked what I saw on this one. I liked the, what appeared to be a high build quality and also the fact that this also has an SD card slot. So what you can do is you can go uh, to a wave edit software that's provided by the manufacturer and you can draw your own wavetables. You can uh, access an online uh, wave edit system that people have posted some waveforms, and uh, you can load those into your machine. And then you can voltage control. Uh, you've got tons of options. I'll do a really in-depth uh, review as I as I get more acclimated to it. But uh, for now, I'd like to quickly uh, show everybody what to expect. I'm going to put a download uh, a link down in the description that's going to be for the download for wave edit so you can just go ahead and grab that there um, the unit does not ship with an sd card so you're going to want to make sure and uh get yourself they run about 10 us dollars get yourself a, a c10 uh 3u or u3 uh speed sd card and you'll want that so uh yeah let me let me show you the software real quick and uh i'll show you the synth and we'll load a wavetable into it and, uh, and then we'll turn on and make some sounds and show you how everything works. Thanks. Okay, once you download and launch your software, it's gonna look like this. And basically, it, all you have to do if you wanna just jump in here and get started is go to this wave online and click that button. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna open up a page with a bunch of different waveforms. It's gonna tell you where it came from, who made it, and you can load it. And I wanna load in this, I wanna load in this one right here. I like the look of this PPG wavetable 31. So I'm just gonna load that bank. And if I come back over here to wave editor, I can see that it's loaded all of the different waveforms that create that wavetable. And we can see here in, uh, in the XY view, you can see them laid out in the grid that if you turn the knob for XY or you control the, ch the voltage, change the voltage for that, it actually cycles through these. And if you have a sound device connected, you can turn it on and you can sweep through there. And you also have a, a waterfall view, which is pretty cool. But anyway, you probably watched the videos on the page that you downloaded the software. If you haven't, I recommend that you do that. But anyway, all you have to do once you load one in that you want to use, you just do a save as, go to wherever you would back those up. I remember this one was PPG 30, I think, 30. So save that into a folder. Okay, so over here I've got my backup folder and I've also uh, got my USD card. So all I'm gonna do now is grab this WAV file. It actually saves out a WAV file. You just drop that in, eject your drive, Okay, so I'll put that drive-in label up. And I'm going to go ahead and turn my system on. And you'll see a nice splash screen when that loads up. And then you'll see the current waveform. Uh, this is nice. However, you have this set from the last time it was on. That's the way it's going to greet you. Okay, so I am currently driving this with the chord section of the Symphonian. So it is constantly outputting four voltages uh, in whatever key I've requested 
uh, from the Symphonian, and uh, this synth does not have any envelopes or um, anything like that, no BCAs, um, so you're just hearing everything raw coming out. But I do have, I have the four inputs coming into the one uh, volt per octave, and I also have the LFO that is coming from the Behringer Neutron running into here, and that is what is making uh, these waves move, this modulation. Now the reason that it's modulating is because I have the mod, uh, I have the mod here for X1, which is where I have that plugged into. I have that turned up a little bit. So you can see the more I turn that up, you can see that wave start to move faster, see? And then also, my parameter X1, I only have that up about a quarter, but if, if I turn that, then you can see it's gonna sweep through a lot more of the entire wave table as I do that, okay? And that's still controlled by the speed, so um, I can turn up the rate of the LFO and you can see that move even faster and faster and faster. So, but what I wanna show you is, uh, we'll go into the menu here and I just want to go to file. And what we want to do is we want to look for that PPG 30, which is this one. So I'll select my PPG 30 wave and just click down on the button and it's going to show me the wave file that I've requested and then one may be in here or it may not, but it's showing me bank user A right now. So if I scroll to the left and highlight bank, I can click on it and then I can find an empty slot, which is just going to be represented by a straight line. And I can just click, which takes me out of that selection and I can go to load, which is that right there. And I can just load that in. So now I know that I've loaded that into E and then I'll exit this file menu. And what I wanna do is go to my voice settings menu now. And here you have voices one, two, three, and four. And I'll keep them, at, I'll keep them the way they are right now, but I'm just gonna change the bank. So if I go to here and bank, and right now it's on user A, but we'll just change that to user E. And then I'll do that for the other voices here. We'll switch that one to E also. Switch that one to E. And finally, the fourth one. I'll switch that one to E. Okay, and if I turn the volume up a little bit on the mixing board. So we can hear that, and if I exit out of here, it's really nice to go to the waves menu and it shows you the waves. That sounds amazing. have it cycling through a couple chords you can hear. So, yeah, it's really nice. Sometimes you can go, I cannot pronounce this word. Lissajus, I don't know. 
uh, but you can see, you can see what the waves, I don't know, I can't explain this, but it's neat to look at. So again, this was PPG 30, uh, and that was downloaded. Uh, I imagine everyone's gonna see the same files there on that software, so yeah, check that one out. Let me show you the way I have this set up. Now you've got four audio outputs, and you can send any of the four voices out those outputs. So I only have one output connected going to my mixer right now, so what I did is I, I chose output four just because of its proximity. And what I, if you highlight number four, you can go into it and you have a, a mixing board. I found this thing was screaming loud. Uh, I ended up turning every all four of uh, all four of the oscillators are going out for, like I said, and I have them at, set at negative 36 decibels. Um, so that's the mixing section the way I have it set up. If I go to voice settings, all of these are set the same way right now. They're all set at cloud. There are four oscillators, and the wave is morphing but the wave table is being pulled from user E, which is the one that I just showed you uh, putting on the flash drive. I don't have glitch on and I don't have, uh, I, maybe that's phase interpolation, uh, but I do have X1 set for the Z parameter and for the speed parameter, I have Y1, okay? So that's what you're hearing, this is, uh, this is the speed. And then uh, X2, if we were if we were to mess with the with the X2, I actually have a uh, the CHS BW parameter. I don't know I don't know what that is. It's not apparently doing much right now. Um, so yeah, all four of those are set the same way, right? The other thing I want to show you is in frequency and chords. Uh, the way I have these set up, if I go to voice one, it's important to point out that. Uh, I have the I have the one volt octave source as one volt octave one because you you can have one input and you can send it to all these if you want through the routing the routing functions the way you can send uh, control signals to any of the VCOs or outputs in any way there's the, I think there's even a matrix for uh, each of the voices of the VCO so you can route those differently again. Um, but the other option in here, instead of, because I'm driving this with the Symphonian, so it's already getting quantized chord information. If I wasn't doing that, right, this has a built-in thing uh, where you can do chord one, two, three, and four. Okay, which I'm not gonna do, I'm gonna go back to one. Uh, but if you had that set to chord, um, you can go to this chord section here, and uh, I believe this will quantize uh, your incoming um, to a specific chord, if you so you can tell it in there. But I don't have to do that because I because the symphonian is going to take care of that for me. So yeah, uh, it's going to take a while to get used to this because uh, it, I think this is really going to encourage me to take a look. If if I were to turn this. Turn it down a little bit. 
if I stop the movement and then I just want to manually scroll through the wave tables, you know, you have the opportunity to use other wave tables and listen and find waves that you like a lot. And that software that they gave us gives you the ability that you can literally, uh, you can draw, you, you know, you can maybe draw a picture of this and then you can recreate that in your wave table and start to make your own collections of wave tables, of wave tables that you like, that you want to morph together to get that sound that you want. So I think this is, uh, when I when I say I, I, I'm looking for mo modules that I think are modern, and uh, this one is kind of this one kind of breaks my rules of uh, size. Um, if they could have made this smaller with smaller knobs, I probably would have been happier. It, it's a it's a pretty big beast. Um, it's not as big as the neutrons, uh, but this I was willing to overlook that because one four oscillators with an SD card. Um, the, I, this may have been the only one I could find, uh, but all the other stuff that it had to offer, and the sound of it is just, it's amazing to me. This thing sounds great. <laughs> so anyway, it, it's getting a little lengthy. Um, I hope you enjoy this video. I hope this gives you an idea. Um, if you're on the fence about buying this device, uh, I say if you've got the rack space and you have the means, uh, this, this may be the way to go. If you only need two oscillators, I really recommend checking out the cloud terrariums, which when I say that this would replace uh, the neutrons, it's, it's not actually replacing anything because I didn't have four oscillators to be driven by the Symphonian, uh, but I have two neutrons, which got me into this whole endeavor. So thank you, Behringer. Uh, yeah, so, uh, I'll probably, I'd like to replace the neutrons maybe with some cloud terrariums. I probably would, we'll see. Um, I really like the sound of this. I think it's really versatile because uh, also in here, uh, if we go back to the voice settings um, and we go to any of these, along with morphing wave, you've got your square and your saw and your triangle and your sine wave. And you've also got um, just all kinds of different stuff to, to modulate and uh, so you can pro you know, I, I feel I could use this as a, a, a traditional synth. It's not analog, it is DSP, um, but you know, what I, I'm not necessarily building a modular synthesizer. My goal is to uh, build what I would consider, I guess, a Eurorack workstation. Uh, again, trying to get not a DAW feel, but a DAW production power in a modular case and get all the benefits of that. I just, this is amazing. I'm super happy. And uh, again, I hope, I hope this helps people who are on the fence about either this device or just Eurorack in general. Um, I can't be, ha I couldn't be happier with, with it. So anyway, take it easy guys. If you like, if you like what you're seeing, please like, and subscribe. I got a Patreon going on and uh, you know, if you want to contribute a couple bucks, um, you know, that's just going to help me get better equipment. And uh, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to keep doing this. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And uh, I believe this should be shared. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.